Hello, the name of the game this week is going to be Cozy and Spooky, so I have the best sweatshirt of all time on so we can get into the cozy spooky mood with our ghost doggies. I also have some actual sleeping doggies on the couch next to me. So this week we are going to be doing our best to find a cozy horror that I actually love because I've been on a little bit of a journey with cozy horror. I would say some of my favorite authors are often classed as cozy horror authors. T. King Fisher, my favorite author of all time. I would say that her horror is cozy and it's cozy to me because it's humorous. I would also say that one of my favorite authors, Neil Gaiman, also writes dark and cozy things. I would say some people class his work as horror, some people don't. I'm not entirely sure where I land on that continuum, but I did pick up this stunning illustrated copy of Neverwhere and I have never read this. So I would love to read this together with you guys so we can kind of decide for ourselves if it is cozy horror or not. Let's backtrack a little bit and talk about my history with cozy horror. So I read my first Darcy Coates earlier this year and in the video that I read that book, my friend Lena reached out to me and asked me if I would want to do some sort of a collab about cozy horror and I said yes, absolutely. But I told her I was super busy so we started with a buddy read. We buddy read Cackle by Rachel Harrison and unfortunately I didn't love that either. So we've decided to try to expand this and we're both really gonna make an effort to see if we can find cozy horror that we love because both of us I think have the same taste in cozy horror and we're not finding what we want. So I'm gonna link to Lena's channel and the video that she's making on this topic as well in the description so go watch hers after you watch this one because we're actually gonna be reading some different books so if you want more cozy horror after this one go watch her video. The cozy horror genre is a bit of an oxymoron, right? It's cozy and it's horror. And I think the things that I haven't loved about Cackle and uh, what was the one that I read from Darcy Coates, The Haunting of Ashburn House, I didn't love either of those because they felt like a cozy mystery had horror tacked onto it. And I don't typically love the cozy mystery Hallmark type vibes where we have this small town and everyone's gossipy. That's not really my favorite type of story. So unfortunately, I don't think Darcy Coates or Rachel Harrison are really for me as authors, but I know through my experience with T. King Fisher and Neil Gaiman, I know there's gotta be other authors out there that do it for me. So here's the plan for this week. I'm gonna read Neverwhere. We're gonna decide if this is gonna be horror or not. And then I have some stuff that I've gotten from the library. So the first thing that I've been seeing across a couple of people's feeds that has been classed as cozy horror is the September house. And this sounds so good. I watched Kayla from Books and Lala read this and I don't think she ended up loving it. I think she may have given it two or three stars, but I do think it is gonna be for me because I love when there is humor plus horror. That is like one of my favorite things. And I think T. King Fisher does that really well. Like The Hollow Places deeply frightened me to my core, but was also funny. And that I think is the type of cozy horror that I want. I don't want, like I said, the Hallmark small town cozy horror, but I do want the found family plus horrifying things plus humor type of cozy horror. That's what I'm searching for. If you guys have recommendations, I would absolutely love them in the comments. Please, please, please help me. I am new to this genre and I do not know what I am doing. But that's what we're gonna find out together this week. So the September house is this couple who moves into this old Victorian house. The realtor is like telling them about all the murders that have happened in this house and all the people who've died in it. The house is so cheap. They don't care. The tone of it seems to be very, very tongue in cheek. Caleb was saying that it's the type of horror where the main character kind of doesn't acknowledge the horrifying things that are happening. Like the walls are bleeding. There are horrifying ghosts everywhere. And she's just kind of like, oh, the walls are bleeding again. Gotta cover that up so my daughter doesn't see it. Silly things like that. And I think it's gonna be right up my alley. So I'm really excited about the September house. I think this is the one I feel the best about. And then I'm also gonna be reading Interview with a Vampire, which I know nothing about. I know this is a movie. My brother's girlfriend actually really likes this movie. So maybe we could read the book and then watch the movie together. And then I'm also going to be reading Manners and Monsters by Tilly Wallace. I have never heard of this book before, but it popped up on a list of cozy horror and it looks to be a really long series 
of silly horror and I think it's gonna be right up my alley. Let's read the description together. A lady never reveals the true extent of her decay. Hannah Mills lives a quiet existence helping her parents conduct research into a most terrible affliction until a gruesome murder during her best friend's engagement party pulls her from the shadows. With her specialist knowledge and demure disposition, Hannah is requested to aid the investigation. Except Hannah discovers her role is to apologize in the wake of the rude and disgraced man tasked with finding the murderer. The obnoxious Viscount Wycliffe thinks to employ Hannah purely as a friend to satisfy Whitehall, but she'll have none of that. The two must work together to find the murderer before the season is ruined, but the Viscount is about to meet his greatest challenge, and it's not a member of the ton with a hankering for brains. I honestly have no idea what to expect with this. It feels like it's a murder mystery. It is seemingly set in like Regency England. Um, I think it's gonna be an interesting time. We're gonna find out together what the situation is. And that's that on that. I'm gonna start with the September house because I am the most excited for it and it just became available from the library. So I will see you when I'm like maybe halfway through it and we'll chat about it. Hi, okay, so I am halfway through the September house and I am loving it. I would say for the first 40% of the book, I have absolutely nothing but good things to say. It is funny, it is over the top, it is truly horrifying with the amount of ghosties and scary things that are going on in this house. I'm having such a good time. So we've seen kind of the origin story of this couple moving into this house. They've always wanted to renovate an old Victorian house. They found the perfect one. We kind of open in the prologue with the realtor walking them through this house for the first time. And they're talking about how, oh yeah, so I am like, obligated to tell you that someone did die in the house and it's so funny the way that the realtor just tries to like nonchalantly drop in that someone killed two people and then themselves in this house and in like a really horrific way she's like so it's really like a one-time thing and then they're like oh yeah you know in a house this old that's bound to happen and then the realtor goes on like yeah and all the other deaths seem to be natural <laughs> so so many people have died in this house and then they settle into the house, September starts coming, and every September things get absolutely crazy. The walls start bleeding, like wall, like blood is gushing from the walls. Uh, there's screaming, there's lots of ghosties, birds will run into the windows. It's objectively scary, but the way that this book is set up makes it extremely funny. And I think this is exactly my taste in cozy horror. I think for me, cozy horror is found family and or funny plus horror. I think that's my taste because I'm having a really lovely time. There are different ghosties in the house that our main character interacts with and has like kind of a friendship with, one of them that tries to bite her all the time. It is so funny the things that she has to do to like get this house ready because her grown daughter ends up coming to visit because her husband has left slash gone missing slash something is going on with her husband and so her grown daughter comes back to the house because she's like dad is missing we need to find him and our main character is like okay whatever i think her name is margaret our main character and so she's trying to get the house ready because her daughter doesn't know that it's haunted and so she's like digging up the bones of this one person to give it to her son so that he'll go away for a couple of weeks calling the priest to exercise the house making sure that all the dead birds are picked up from the yard scrubbing the blood off the walls it's just like very very deeply funny and absurd all of the things that she's doing to try to hide this from her daughter and her daughter thinks that she's going crazy because like things are being moved because one of the ghosties is moving them she's like mom why is the tea in the kitchen sink like that doesn't make sense it's really funny i'm having a good time i will say check content warnings before you read this if you have any sensitivities because there was a reveal that happened that i wasn't expecting and um made me almost not want to continue reading just because i don't love reading about that type of thing but i think it's gonna be okay so i'm gonna power through and i'll let you guys know obviously i'll stop reading it if it becomes detrimental to my mental health um but yeah just i would check content warnings i wasn't expecting to need to but obviously i should always check content warnings Anyways, if you're like me and you don't check them as much as you probably should, I would just give it a little glance for this one. Like I said, I'm about halfway through and my goal is to get this finished in the next couple of days. My master plan right now, it's Sunday afternoon. I really desperately want to take the dogs on a walk and it is gorgeous outside. It's like 65, 70 degrees. I've got a cute little fall skirt on. We've got a little Webster ready to go for a walk. And I thought you guys might want to come with. I'm not sure how many leaves are changing. I haven't been on a walk in a couple of days, so we're gonna go check it out together.
Hello friends, we were on the floor because I wanted dog cuddles and I need to update you because I just finished reading The September House. And I really, really liked this. We finally found a cozy horror that I like. I'm shocked, I'm so excited. There were a few moments in this book where I was really, really worried that it was just gonna go in a direction that was not what I wanted. But looking back, I'm actually kind of glad that we went down those paths because I think it did add some tension to the book and I think it needed it. I don't think this was a perfect book by any means. I don't think it's a five star, but I think it is a really solid like a 4.25. I had a really, really good time with this one. The horror was horror. It was gross. It was scary. It was also incredibly funny and I loved the absurdity of it. I think that's really my taste in cozy horror is I love absurdity. There was one particular scene where I could not stop laughing. It was just quintessential my taste in cozy horror because there was this intervention type situation that was happening and our main character is trying so hard to like focus and answer these questions and like be really present for this super serious conversation. But there are so many ghosts around her and they're doing such disgusting things and she's trying to pay attention and she just can't and it is just so freaking funny. I had such a good time reading this. I would highly recommend. I know some people have not been loving this, but if you like campy, over the top, absurd, silly horror that is also gross, and I would also, like I said earlier, make sure you check content warnings before picking this one up because there is some stuff going on in here, but I just had such a good time. I would highly recommend this. I also absolutely love the way it ended. That's always a hard thing for me with horror is if it sticks the landing. And it really, it really did. I had such a good time. So now that we have finished The September House, we need a new audiobook. So I think I'm gonna grab Manners and Monsters on script. And then I also, hopefully, I'm gonna start reading Neverwhere tonight. So I will see you after work. Just kidding, I have one more update and something I need your opinion on. So I painted my nails last night, which by the way, was so fun. Dan and I, usually when we hang out, we like do something, we have somewhere to go, we're going on a date. But last night was one of the first nights that we just kind of hung out and just existed in each other's space. Like I had already eaten dinner, but he hadn't eaten yet. We wanted to spend time together. I had some things I need to get done, including painting my nails. So I just hung out on his couch and painted my nails while he played video games and ate dinner. And it was just really nice to just do nothing together. It just feels really nice and safe and stable to be in a relationship where we don't have to be doing things all the time. And we're just hanging out existing in each other's face and having a good time. Anyways, I painted my nails brown. I keep painting my nails brown and I need your opinion on this because, because here's the situation. I don't love colors on my nails, but I also really like having my nails painted and I want your opinion for colors, like specifically gel nail polish that is dark neutral colors that aren't black. Are you gonna come say hi too? We're gonna have both doggies in this clip? Oh my goodness, hello. Did you have a nice nap? Was it a good one? Yeah. So yeah, that's literally all I wanted to say. What are your opinions on dark neutral nail polish colors? I would love to hear in the comments because I keep painting them the same shade of brown and it's getting a little bit boring. I don't wanna paint them black, but I do wanna paint them dark neutrals. Okay, thanks. I'll see you guys after work. What are you doing? Oh, you can't lay down. I gotta go back to work, baby. Lunchtime's over. It's time to go worky so I can pay for your kibbles. It is. <laughs> There's too many doggies. Okay, bye friends. <laughs> Hey, okay. hello, I decided to edit right after work and the puppies are hungry, so I need to go feed them. But first, update on manners and monsters. So I have started reading it. I think I'm maybe like a quarter of the way through it. It's fine. I don't, okay, here's what I'll say about it. I don't know if it's gonna be true horror. It is gross, but I don't know if it's gonna be horror. It feels like a dark, murder mystery. I have been incredibly nauseous today and I had to stop reading this book. I was reading the audiobook while I was just going about my morning and I had to stop reading it. It usually, things like this don't 
aren't gross to me but i was so nauseous today and it was i was having a really rough time because our main character's father is like performing an autopsy and usually that stuff doesn't gross me out but <laughs> it really got me today and i had to put the book down so there is a lot of like gross things the premise of this book is that we are we're in regency england and there's like i don't know something happened the french were trying to sabotage people they accidentally created zombie women <laughs> they put like a, a something in the face powder and so a bunch of the noble women and some of the men have this affliction where they die but they keep moving around they're basically zombies and they have a craving for brains and it's very uh silly the way that it's put together i would say that the vibe is similar to it's like if you took the wisteria society of lady scoundrels and you toned it way down like that's way up here like i would say even more cheeky than the princess bride is this is that energy but way toned down so it is kind of funny the way that they're going about explaining the zombie situation without calling them zombies we have this premise set up we have this dude who i'm i don't know if this is gonna be a romance but it kind of feels like it could be um this dude who's got some interesting ideas about women uh who's investigating a murder that has happened someone ate someone's brain and we need to investigate and our main character it's kind of also giving half a soul in this specific vibe because our main character's bestie just got engaged and she's like thinking she's never gonna be married i think she's like 27 or something she thinks she's never gonna be married um she's just gonna be her friend's companion that's gonna be the vibe and now we have this mystery we need to uncover and she's gonna be working with this grumpy dude and i guess we'll see what happens from there but the part of the work that her dad does is trying to investigate this affliction the zombie situation and so it's it's kind of gross <laughs> there's a lot of gross things going on and uh, the september house was much grosser because it really is true horror uh but for whatever reason thanks to my nausea this one's really getting me so uh i'm gonna try to not throw up and get through this book and i will let you know what i think of it i think i told you in the last clip that i was starting neverwhere i did not start neverwhere i will do my very best to start it it's definitely not horror it's definitely not horror but it will be dark and cozy so i feel like i'm allowed to still include it this poor webster's got his chin resting on my leg right now he really wants his dinner so i'm gonna go feed this poor starving doggy it's 5 30 and he hasn't had dinner yet so he's obviously wasting away so i'm gonna go feed him and i'll see you guys when i finish something back from a very fun evening with friends and i have now finished manners and monsters so we need to recap that let me tell you about my night so after work my friend and i went to spirit halloween to grab some last minute items for our halloween costume so dan and i are going to be pirates so i picked up some items which i'll show you guys tomorrow when i put the whole costume together and then we went to a brewery for twilight trivia it was a time <laughs> i have never really been a twilight girly but i did have a very fun time with the giggles hanging out with the girlies so i'm really glad that i went and now i am absolutely exhausted because i only got like five hours of sleep last night i just couldn't sleep i don't know what to tell you um so <laughs> i'm exhausted but i finished reading manners and monsters it was fine i don't think i'll be continuing in this series it just wasn't something that I like really wanted to pick up. I would say if you're into Regency murder mystery vibes, it's worth a shot. This video is making me question what horror is because The September House I feel like is very definitely horror, but I don't know how to classify a cozy murder mystery that has zombies like i guess it is cozy horror i guess it is this weird genre that we're trying to define i don't know it wasn't scary to me let me know what you guys think in the comments about what horror actually is because now i've started reading interview with the vampire and it's feeling very similar to like a dowry of blood which i think was in what are we talking about i didn't wash my face yet 
I don't know why I'm putting moisturizer on. I'm very confused. A Diary of Blood was in, I believe, the Goodreads Choice Award for horror. And I would say that that was the same level of scary. And like Carmilla, which is horror, I would say is the same level of scary as Interview with a Vampire. So I don't know. I don't know what horror is. I'm confused. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Before we talk about Interview with a Vampire, we need to actually talk about Manners and Monsters. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have much to say about it. I thought it was fine. It was interesting. It definitely felt like the first book in a really long series. So I don't want to say that not much happened because a lot of things did happen. Like we wrapped up the whole thing that we were there for. We just also didn't see a whole ton of character development, like the relationships of characters, because this is going to be a really long story over multiple books and I'm sure the payoff will be great, but I'm just not willing to read a 48 book series, you know? Those are my feelings about it. I think once again, we have solidified that my taste in cozy horror is not the murder mystery, cozy mystery type of horror, type of cozy. It's the humor and or found family and or absurdity type of coziness. That's my taste and I think that's what we're learning in this video and that's what I wanted us to learn so yay good for us. <laughs> I think that's all I want to say about Manners and Monsters. It really was super forgettable. I have no, I have nothing to say to you about it. I started reading Interview with the Vampire. It's giving Carmilla, it's giving A Dowry of Blood, it's giving gothic vampire story and I'm really excited. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be cozy at all. I think maybe this is cozy to people because it is nostalgic and the way that this is an older story and there's an older movie about it and people remember it from childhood. I don't think it's actually going to be cozy in the same way that Manners and Monsters and The September House are cozy. I literally pulled these off of a Goodreads list. Like these are just things that people has, have shelved as cozy horror. This upcoming weekend is like the Halloween weekend. So we have a couple of friends hosting parties on Friday. I'm hosting a party on Saturday. So I'm really not sure what's gonna go down, where we need to be, but I'll take you guys along with me for whatever happens. That's everything I wanna talk to you about here. Let's go into the bedroom. I have Neverwear in there. I need to talk to you about that as well. Okay, so I started, wow, the lighting in here is awful. I'm so sorry about that. I promise I'll make this short. I started reading Neverwear. I am, 48 pages in. This is scarier than I thought it was gonna be. It's kind of giving me middle game vibes. It's less dark than middle game, but it is dark. There are people who are chasing this girl and they very much want to kill her and it's quite scary. Can I tell you how incredibly beautiful this book is? It is an illustrated copy and every other page has an illustration. It's just, it's just so beautiful. I'm going to take lots of clips of this while I read it so you guys can see some of the beautiful, beautiful illustrations that are in here. But we have this boy who moved to London and he's now encountered this girl called Dor and she's on the run from two assassins. And I don't know anything more than that. I didn't read a synopsis. That's what's happening. And it's Neil Gaiman and I love his writing, so I'm excited to keep going. This is like a novelized version of a TV show, and I actually really enjoyed the introduction, author's note, whatever it was, uh, where he talks about this book and how it originally was this TV series, and every time something didn't translate the way that he wanted it to in the TV show or they had to cut a scene, his refrain would always be, it's okay, I'll put it back in the book, and I kind of really loved that. I've always thought of books that came after TV shows or books that came after novelizations of other film TV show media. I've thought of them as like less than. Like in my head, I always thought that the book should come first and then the movie would be made from the book and the book was always better than the movie. But if a TV show came first, then the book that came second would always be worse. I don't know why I thought that, but I really liked the way that he talked about that in here because that totally makes sense. If you're writing a screenplay and things get cut that you can have your full author's text in the book, you can do it right the second time around. Anyways, I thought that was interesting. Um, I am very much enjoying it. I am going to go to sleep so quickly so that I can get up and read two books tomorrow so that we can get back on track. We're a little bit behind, that's okay. Things have been going well so far. I'm excited. Okay, good night. <laughs> Hello, 
happy Friday. The clip you just saw is from a few days ago, but I wanted to put it in here because I never mentioned it again. So by way of movie magic, I put together some photos of my friends and loved ones. And I have to say, having it right here has been so incredibly helpful when I am like in the trenches of working and I am struggling with whatever I'm doing, just being able to like look over and seeing the faces of people that I love has been so nice. I've had this like thing on my wall since I moved in basically. It was one of the first things that I put up and I just hadn't put up photos. It just seemed like a really big thing for my brain to do, to go through my photos, pick the ones that I wanted to print out, go get them printed and then hang. It took me like 10 minutes. So I had a really fun time doing that. And now today is the day that we need to <laughs> finish two books. Morale was low last night. I just edited that footage and I was so sleepy. Morale is a lot higher today. We are officially in Halloween weekend. I am so excited for the Halloween festivities. I need to really read so many books. I'm not even, I'm maybe a quarter of the way through Interview with a Vampire. Um, It's getting interesting. I don't know when exactly it was written. Let me understand when it was written so I can place it in its time because some things are being said and I'm a little worried. Okay, yeah, so it was written in 1976 and it is giving 1976 energy. So far, it's kind of set on a plantation. There are enslaved people. The way that our author is talking about the enslaved people is just a little bit of a weird situation. Curious to see how that is going to unfold. But surprisingly, I wasn't aware of this. This is set in New Orleans, which is a place that I have lived in before. So I'm very happy to be back in New Orleans. That was a really pleasant surprise to have a lot of it set in New Orleans. I'm not sure how much of the book is gonna be there. I'm not sure if we're staying in New Orleans or what's gonna happen, but we're there right now and I'm having a good time. So this book opens with an interview with a vampire, which is very exciting. So we have this boy who's tape recording these interviews and it seems like that's what he does. He goes around and interviews people who have a good life story. He's very excited to interview the vampire because he wants to know like why he believes he's a vampire, whatever. Very quickly, this person believes that this person is a vampire and just kind of gets right into it. And then we kind of get launched back into um, this interview situation. And I have to say, I love books that have this premise. I love when we are doing an interview setup. It's just such a cool way to set up a book because then we get the commentary on the story as well as the story. I don't know, I just really feel like it adds an interesting element to the structure of the story. And I am having a good time so far. I'm now going to stop talking to you and start reading in earnest because I, this is a 14 hour audiobook. I'm reading it on two times speed. That's still a lot of hours and I don't have many hours left in this day. So I'm going to do my very best to finish this book. Uh, we're going to see what happens. We did it. We finished reading a book. I have finished reading Neverwhere and I absolutely loved it. Is it horror? Probably not. It's fantasy. It's dark. It's scary. We have assassins chasing a girl, like chasing our main characters. It's, it's deeply terrifying. This whole premise of there being a London that is London below instead of the London above that we all know. There being this other world that we don't know about that has magic, nefarious and otherwise. And it's just, I just really love Neil Gaiman's work. It really feels like an, a fairy tale for adults. All of his work does. And I love it so much. I'm so glad that I used this video as an excuse to read this book. Even though maybe it didn't super fit into the cozy horror genre, I think this kind of encapsulates all the things that I want cozy horror to be. 
I think if Neil Gaiman wrote true horror, like the Sandman is deeply scary, at least the TV show was, I haven't actually read the source material. I would really love to see Neil Gaiman go there and write horror horror. I think he would do a really good job of writing cozy horror because this has the humor, this has the found family that I deeply love in cozy stories. And it's also dark. And I also really love how dark it gets. And I really wish that Neil Gaiman would write cozy horror. That's what I have to say in this. I loved it so much. I'm gonna put it at exactly the same as I put September House. It's a 4.25. Uh, I loved it so, so, so much. It wasn't a perfect book. Actually, no, I lied to you. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 just because this edition is so stunning and it's absolutely gorgeous. And the illustrations in here are just beautiful. I've never seen an illustrated copy of a book like this where the illustrator just writes around the story and puts their illustrations in the margins. Chris Riddle did an absolutely fantastic job with the illustrations on this. I loved it so much. I am also deep in party preparation. I'm not sure if I told you guys, but I am hosting a Halloween party tonight. So you saw me make sangria. I've got a quadruple batch of autumnal sangria. I'll put the recipe in the description because it is so good. I made this for a little girlies night that we had before and it was so good that I needed to make it again for this Halloween party. Let me see the other things that I need to update you on. Okay, here's, I'm so sorry you guys, but I'm not gonna be able to finish interview with a vampire. I am, I think a little over a quarter of the way through it and I just, do not have the time to finish reading it and I'm really bummed about it. But it kind of came down to this morning, I had a choice to make between finishing Interview with the Vampire and finishing Neverwhere and I wanted to read this so much more than I wanted to read Interview with the Vampire. I will do my very best to finish that one before the end of the month so that I can put it in my end of the month wrap up. So if you're curious to hear my final thoughts on that, I will include it in there, but it just, it wasn't really doing it for me. I think when I first spoke to you about it, I was really interested in it, I was having a good time, and my interest has sort of waned since then. Um, I'm just not really interested in what's going on, unfortunately, so I'm gonna try it again when I'm less under pressure to get the book done, and hopefully it'll go better then. So unfortunately, this is where I'm going to have to leave you, so I have time to edit all of this together. If I do have time to put in some clips of us setting up for the party in our Halloween costumes, I'm going to include that here. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for being here. Please let me know if you have any cozy horror recommendations in the comments. I will say, I think this video, I think I achieved what I wanted to do. I think I have solidified my taste in cozy horror and that it is, I really do want it to be absurd and over the top or funny or found family. Those are the three things that I'm looking for when I say I'm looking for cozy horror. And I do like my horror to be gross and over the top and paranormal. That's my favorite type of horror. So if I can find all of those things, I will be a very happy camper. And I think that's why the September house did go so well for me because with the ghosties, there ended up being kind of a found family with our main character because she's talking to all of these little ghosties and she has her ghost housekeeper and she's so funny. I found that to be an incredibly cozy found family situation in the September house. I don't think I mentioned that. So I wanted to put that at the end here. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling so I can get this edited and uploaded for you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. I post every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I will see you next time. Bye.